Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Hope you all had a wonderful Labor Day weekend uh, for those of you who celebrate that particular holiday. Um, so last time I talked to you guys about uh, highlights and shadows and I'd like to continue on that subject today again. So we're gonna, this is like highlights and shadows week two. Um, and so I showed you last time how you can do some highlights and shadows by actually drawing on every frame. And that works okay, but, um, you know, obviously it's a lot of work. Now, if you're doing something like if you're doing a feature film and you're really wanting to have that look of hand-drawn animation, you will most likely um, draw every frame. So let's get started today. I'm going to do something slightly different, though. Um, I just brought in this color animation piece here. Um, so it's still a frame-by-frame -frame animation, but instead of... Um, drawing the shadow, I'm going to try something a little bit different. So um, in my network view here, I've just got my color layer. Excuse me, I've got my color layer here that I can work with. And I'm not really using that drawing layer, so I can just get rid of that just to keep this nice and clean. Um, and so just like before, uh, we're going to go into our module library. And this, by the way, this can be done with both Anime Pro and Harmony. Of course, um, pretty much all of this whole section is going to be able to be that way. So um, what we'll do is we're going to bring in that same highlight module that we used before. Um, and remember, whenever you have any of these modules, the right-hand port on the top is going to be used for the source or for the image that you want the shadow to be applied to. And the left-hand port is the mat or the thing that you want to create the shadow with. Um, and I can take this and I can slide it in there. If I hold down the Alt key while I drag, I can slide it in right there so that I have that in the right-hand port. So, so far it's not doing anything um, because I've just got one drawing that's plugged into the right-hand port. So I've got a drawing that I want to affect, but I don't have anything that defines how I want it to be affected. So this is where we're going to go into something that's a little bit more tricky, but it's kind of a cool concept. And this is to use a copy of the drawing as the mat. So um, to do this, I'm actually going to go here into the Move tab. You can find this either in the Move tab of your module library or in all modules, uh, but in the Move tab, you have this handy effect here called Apply Peg Transformation. And if I drag that one in, this one actually has three ports. Um, if you take a look at what's in the user guide, you'll notice that the middle port and the left port do two different things. We're just going to use the right-hand port and the left-hand port. So what the right-hand port will take is it will take the drawing that you, want to, that you want to copy and move over. So I'm going to take my original drawing, plug it into the right-hand port. And then I'm going to plug the output of that back into my highlight module. And um, as soon as I do that, by the way, you can see the entire character got highlighted. Just to show you that, I'll, I'll disable that module and um, disconnect it. So you see when I disconnect it, it's the regular color. And as soon as I connect that, the entire character is highlighted. So it's already doing what we want it to do, except we want to take that highlighted piece and move it over a little bit. And that's what the Apply Peg Transformation is going to let us do. So in other words, we've got our original drawing here going into the right-hand port of the highlight, the thing that you want it to be affected. And then we're taking the same drawing and we're going to plug it into our apply peg transformation. And what this guy does is it's making, this is making a copy and then it's going to take that copy and move it over. In order to actually move it over though, we need to have a peg in there. So let's drag a peg in. And this peg, we can now stick in the left-hand port of the apply peg transformation. So basically what happens it now is that when you have that peg there attached, you can go in with your transform tool and you can actually like move this over a little bit like so. And now it's just highlighting. Do you see that it's highlighting kind of everything on the right hand side? Just like with everything else, um, when you do this sort of thing, you get an OpenGL preview that kind of shows you what it's going to look like. But if you actually want to see the full render, then you have to click on that render view button. And just to make it a little bit easier for us to see here as well, I'm going to go in there and just put a color card underneath everything to give myself a white background so I can really check out what's going on. So let's zoom in here on this character. So you see it's highlighting everything there 
except that little piece around the back. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but let's take a quick look inside the highlight module. Inside here, you also have the ability, there's something in here called invert matte. So if you keep in mind that the thing that's plugged into the left hand part of the highlight is considered the matte. That is the area that you want the highlight effect to be affecting. Um, then if I click on that one, it's going to inverse it. So in other words, instead of now highlighting the inside, it's just highlighting that edge. And as I take that peg, if I select the peg and move it over, it's going to change how much of that character is being um, affected. So what's really cool about this is the fact that you don't really have to redraw anything. Um, but what's tricky about it is, particularly with frame-by-frame -frame animation, it, it's not going to do a perfect job. Because if you look at what that looks like or where that thing is, um, for example, like let's just put that back down on the timeline so I can see that. If I look at how these guys are overlapping each other, let's turn on back into my OpenGL view for a second, then um, you know if you if you move this over too far, then now part of the nose is is going to create a little bit of highlight there. So it works really well if you don't move it too too far, but if you're moving it really far over, it's not going to work anymore. But for a lot of cases. Um, what they want to have is they just want to have a little bit of kind of an outline highlight or shadow on the outside and for that this works really wonderfully. The other thing that you could use this whole process for, um, well I think you could use it for it, I don't know if anyone actually does, but if you ever are like me and you have trouble being consistent across many frames, like this is a frame by frame piece of animation and I'd like for my shadow or my highlight to be in a consistent position across all of those, but I don't really want to have to go in and eyeball it, you could always use this as a reference layer. I don't think anyone's actually done this, by the way. I just came up with this, but here's an idea. You can use that as a reference layer, and then you can take an, a brand new, fresh drawing layer on top of that, and now you can go in and draw the precise shadow that you want, and the precise shadow will be in exactly the right spot, but, but the, the usefulness of having this reference layer is that now you know exactly where that shadow needs to go, but you can draw where you want it to cut precisely. So I thought that's kind of a clever idea. I don't know if anyone's actually done that before, but I think that would be a good idea if you're doing a frame-by-frame -frame animation style to use this as a reference as you're doing that. Um, so I just want to go over one other thing this week, and then I'm going to wrap up the concept of highlights and shadows next week. But um, let's just finish off with one other thing this week, and that other thing that I want to do is Go over the same concept here, except instead of doing a frame-by-frame -frame animation, let me clear that out, um, I'm going to do this on a cutout character. So um, there is actually a scene that I have already, I have this done on, so I'll just take this scene and I'm going to just pull it apart and show you how it was done rather than doing it from scratch. But it is entirely um, possible and easy to do it from scratch in the same way that I just did it here for this one. But let's take this um, example right here. So in this case, this now that we're looking at, this is a cutout character. I can tell because I can select each one of those drawing layers individually, and I can animate the position of those drawing layers around. Um, and it's also got the same kind of highlights and shadows. So for example, I could take that. Um, let's just go in here, take a look at the network view. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing when I get in here. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, but basically, if we take a look at this, let's try to clean this up a little bit. Let me just drag this and pop it down in the bottom. It's going to look a little nicer. Okay, so, so basically what we've got in here is we've got our original cutout character here, and this original cutout character is a group, and just like any other cutout character, you've got all the different separated layers. You have pegs to control certain elements together. You have um, you know composites to gather elements together. Um, it's probably better for some of these ones on the inside uh, to do that as a pass-through composite and only put the very last uh, the very last composite at the bottom of your character as a bitmap one uh, for reference. But in any way, so what you have here is you have one uh, composite that's gathering together all of the drawing layers for your character, and that's inside a group. And there's a master peg on top just to make it easy to grab that whole character. So at the point when this is coming out, at the, the pipe that's coming out at the bottom here, 
this is a lot like what you do with your frame by frame animation. So you only have one pipe going down, and so that one pipe is going to go into your highlight on the right hand side, and it's also going to go into your applied peg transformation just like we did it with our frame by frame animation. Um, but here, because I have that composite gathering together all the different layers, it's basically saying take all of those layers and put that in here with your apply peg transformation. So um, this way has the same kind of advantages and disadvantages that you had with the other option. It's slightly better now um, because of the fact that it is a cutout character, but it's still not what I would call the most flexible system. So it works really well um, on the outside of the character. The thing that you don't get is you don't really get any shadows like on the inside. So is when the ear is folded in, I don't see a shadow here, or I don't see a highlight here, um, which is which is fine depending on what you want your scene to look like. So um, what's really cool about it though is if I drag this all the way up, it's going to apply the shadow on the outside of the ear there, and I get the sorry the highlight on the right on the left side, and I get the shadow on the right. And then when I render this out, just give it a second to render, then it's going to render out very nicely across that entire character. So this you know, this way of doing things actually works really, really well for a cutout character, particularly if you're going for this really um, soft look. Uh, with the soft look, you know, you have a radius value on your highlight and shadow there, and since the radius value is turned up a little bit, you don't notice small imperfections in the highlight and shadow, because of course it's not a perfect solution. So um, I want to leave it there for this week, and then I'm just going to finish up with you guys with the highlight and shadow concept next week by talking about the last way of doing highlights and shadows which is specific to cutout characters um, and it's the way that I see a lot of studios doing the shadows on cutout characters if they have shadows. Keep in mind guys that not all TV shows out there even have highlights and shadows on their characters. Some of them have no highlights and shadows on their characters. When you want to do something like highlights and shadows it's great it is going to add a little bit of complexity to your process. If you want to do something really simple like this, the complexity is not so bad. But if you have dynamic light sources that are moving around and you know you want to um, animate precisely on a cutout character the position of the highlights and shadows, there is a slight sort of process involved there. So let's go into that process next week. But for this week, that's what I wanted to show you, the apply peg transformation shadow. And I think it's a very cool way to go, so definitely give that one a shot and try it out. See you guys next week.